Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. A couple things I want to mention to you as we prepare to go into the Word of the Lord together this morning. Uh, I've been sharing with you through the month of December about uh, reading the Word of God in the upcoming year. Today is January 1. There's no better time to start reading the Word than today. Uh, when you leave today out of the Welcome Center, there are a lot of Bible reading plans that are out there and available for you. I want to encourage you to stop by and pick one up. Maybe you already have one of your own. God bless you if you do. I encourage you to, to get engaged with it and read. Uh, so many of you are using the YouVersion app. Uh, I would encourage you, if you've not explored part of that, there are many, many Bible reading plans in the YouVersion app that you can utilize. Uh, but those are available out there. There are a lot of different ones. Some of them are topical. Uh, some of them are based on, as a new believer, starting brand new. Um, just a lot of them that are available. Here's, here's why we're doing that. Psalm 119, 105 says that his word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light for our pathway. The truth is today is January 1. We have no idea. How many of you know 2016 was a little different than most of us planned it to be in a lot of areas? We have no idea where 2017 is going to go, but we do know this. He is still on the throne. Can you say amen to that? Amen. 2017, he will still be God. And the truth is, I need his word to light my pathway. I need his word to guide me. I need his word to give me wisdom because 2017, there's going to be some decisions Jerry Galloway is going to need to make. And I need to have wisdom when I get ready to do that. I want his word to guide me. The word also says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I what? Might not sin against God. I want this year to be a year where I live uh, a life holy unto the Lord, separated unto him. How can I do that? The word of God will keep me from sin. Listen, the word of God will keep you from sin. But if you keep from the book, it will lead you, life will lead you into a way of sin. And so I want to encourage you to get into the word of God Pick up a Bible reading plan. Begin. The good news is, today's January 1. Normally, when we have a service, you know, it's on the third or fourth. We have to say, okay, if you, you're starting today, you can get caught up. There's no catching up today. Today's a great day to start. January 1, you can go home, start uh, a Bible reading plan. Many of you, uh, like many other people today in our world, uh, have set some New Year's resolutions. You're looking for some change in some areas of your life. Um, some of you uh, are you're wanting to... Uh, there to be a little less of you throughout the year. Uh, you can call that whatever you want to call it. Uh, we made lots of different resolutions. I'm going to change this. I'm going to get some new habits. I'm going to do a little less of this. I'm going to do some more of that. Listen, there is no greater thing you can purpose for this upcoming year than to read the Word of God and to let the Word of God look into your life. I promise you it'll build your life. It'll strengthen your life. There is nothing that will change your life more than reading the Word of God. And the truth is, though, uh, you know, we may have made the resolution where there's going to be a little of, less of us this year. We're all, how many of y'all know we're all still going to eat this year? Every one of us is going to do some eating. We've done a lot, if you're like our house, we've done a lot of that through the holidays. And we're going to fast, I think, for the month of January just to try to kind of get back on track. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to eat, and every one of you, you're going to eat every day. Why? Because if you don't, your body gets weak. If you don't eat every day, your body gets worn out and you don't have the nutrients you need because there are things you're going to go through and your body won't be built up to head through them. Listen. You need to take the Word of God in daily so that it will strengthen your spirit, man. Because you don't know the things that you and I are going to face spiritually in the coming year. And you need to take in of the life of God. Listen, this is the most important book you can put on your reading list this year. This is the most important decision. If you want to talk about, I'm going to get more discipline this year, there's no greater area to discipline yourself in than reading the Word of God. You need to take it in. It will prepare you. It will guide you. It will help you. It will literally change your life. If you don't believe me, try it. Try it. And you tell me at the end of the year if there's not a change in your life. 
the word of God. Maybe some of you, you've tried it before and you did good for the first week or the first month and then it kind of fell by the wayside. Now's the time to start again. If some of you have been faithful and you've been reading the word through uh, in a year's time, I encourage you, keep on. That's a great thing. You're going to continue to grow as you do that. Maybe some of you have never read the word of God faithfully. Listen, this has the power to turn your life around spiritually. And so I want to encourage you to engage in the Word of God. That is not my sermon. Let me tell you, that was hard this morning to put that as the preparation from the before my sermon because I could preach just that this morning for the power that it has in your life. But we'll leave that for another Sunday. You just pick up a Bible reading plan and uh, start reading the Word of God with us. And I know the Lord will do some incredible things. This year, your life will be different because of the Word of God in your life. Joshua chapter 24 is where we're heading this morning. Joshua chapter number 24, we're going to read beginning in verse number 15. Joshua 24, today as you're turning there, what I want to do is I want to share with you on the power of making a choice. Power of making a choice. Throughout the Bible and the history of humanity, God has called his people uh, to make a choice. The truth is, is you and I are gathered in this place today and 2016 is behind us and 2017 is ahead of us. The truth is the majority of the outcome of our lives comes down to our choices. The conditions of our nation today, the atmosphere of the homes in America today, the state of our marriages, the condition of our relationships are founded on the choices that we make. Let me tell you, you, if all there is in your house is fussing and fighting, guess what? That's because you chose to make it that way. I'm going to come back and I'm going to redo that one again. We choose. Now, if there's husband and wife, the husband and wife together make the choice. If you're fussing and fighting all the time, you can't say it's his fault, it's her fault. Listen, it's your fault. It's going to be quiet as I preach today. Wow. The majority of the outcome of our life has to do with the choices that we make. Now, for the majority of us, our lives where we're at today is a result of the choices we've made. Now, we understand. Now, let's just be honest for a moment. We understand there are situations in our life where how many of y'all have other people involved in your life? And other people, how many know, can make some choices, and their choices often bring a backwash on us, and they bring some effects on us, and there are situations that we have to deal with because of the choices they've made. But I'll tell you, in my life, those have been small compared to the choices that Jerry Galloway made. So listen, if you're spending all your time blaming somebody else for the condition of your life, you need to stop for a moment and take a look on the inside. Because though there are other people around us that do make those choices, friends, the majority of our lives are bound up in the choices that we've made. The truth is, if you and I make good choices, life gets you to a better place. If you make bad choices, your life gets in a worse place. How many of you have made some bad choices in your life before? I have. You know, the question we got to be asking is not how many bad choices that I've made, but how many good choices am I now making about my bad choices that I made? You see, I can't do anything about yesterday, but I do have today. I can't go back just like you can't. We can't have a rewind and do 2016 over, but today's January 1. We got a brand new year, a brand new season. It's time to make some good choices about even some of the bad choices that we've made. The truth is, in this room today, from the pulpit to the back doors and each side wall, there's not a person in this place who has not stood over milk that has been spilt, not one person who has been in a place where plans in your life went south, not one person who has not experienced the waves of regret washing up on the shore of your life. And the truth is, we often say, if I could go back, but I can't. If I could do differently, but I can't. If I could just rewind the tape a little bit, 
but I simply cannot do it. But what we can do is start making better choices today about tomorrow. You see, the challenge today for you and I is to motivate us to make better choices, choices that we've not yet made, choices that we are yet to determine in our life, and choices that we are yet to agree upon in our path. Really what today is about, really what this time together in the Word is about, is about making a choice. It's time to draw a line in the sand and settle something in your heart and in your mind. In Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15, we find Joshua is nearing the time of his death. He's given his last minute directives to the people of Israel. And he says, actually, what I want to do, Josh, you won't have this. Don't worry. We'll get to verse 15 in a second. Let's back up for your reading. Those of you that have your Bible with you, back up to verse number 14. There, Joshua 24 and verse 14. Now, fear the Lord. And serve him with all faithfulness. Isn't that a good exhortation for us on January 1? Fear the Lord and serve him in all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, verse 15, here's where we were going to pick up. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There is incredible power in choosing in our lives. And this morning what I want us to do, you can leave your Bible open. We're going to spend all of our time right there in verse number 15, and we're just going to walk through that passage together. I've got some thoughts that I want to share with you and some challenges. Number one, I would submit to you this. To make a choice demands a commitment from us. To make a choice demands a commitment from us. The choice that Joshua was calling the people to demanded a commitment from them. Notice in verse 15 he says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose. Then choose. 1 Corinthians chapter 18 and verse 21 tells us about Elijah and the prophets of Baal and the Israelites on top of Mount Carmel. And he said this in verse 21. How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, then serve him. But if Baal is God, follow him. He was calling them that day to make a choice. James chapter 1 verse number 8 tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all he does. You ever met somebody that just couldn't make up their mind? Well, I don't know what I'll do. Well, I think I'll do this. And five minutes later, well, no, I think I'm going to do this. And Well, I, no, I think I ought to do that. The Bible says an unstable man is because he won't make up a decision. He can't make up his mind. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. If you're the kind of person that you lack decision in areas of your life, what you're going to find is it's going to bleed over to the other areas of your life and cause them to be unstable too. The truth is by avoiding a decision that needs to be made, the truth is we're actually making a decision. When you choose not to make a decision, you're still making a decision. How long have you been waiting to make the choice to be God's man or God's woman in this world? How long have you been waiting on making the choice to be the husband you really need to be and the wife you need to be? How long have you been waiting to make the choice to be the father to your children, the mother to your children, the church member that you need to be? I'm not going to preach that one very long. I'll leave that one alone for a little bit. How long has it been since you've been needing to make this decision? Let me tell you, friends, when we make a choice, it calls us to a place of commitment. To avoid making a decision that needs to be made is making a decision. That's why Joshua stood in front of the people he was leading and he said, it's time to choose. Friend, choosing demands a commitment from us. This is not about while I feel good. This is about till death do us part. 
This about I made up my mind to serve Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm not doing it just while it's popular or while it's good. While there's breath left in this body, I'm still going to serve Jesus Christ and I'm going to live for him all the days of my life. A choice calls you and I to a place of commitment. Commitment that says, I'm going to stick with it through the difficult times and the good times. Commitment that says, I'm going to be there no matter what. You know what? I was amazed this morning. This morning early, the clock went off. And I was so blessed in my heart as I saw about seven, about 725 or so men and women started coming in. We had band members and uh, singers that started coming in early while some of y'all were still in bed. They were here, and you know, for a lot of them, they were up late last night, and they were having fun with friends and all that, but yet early this morning, they were here. They made a choice. And that choice said, I'm committed to being there. It would have been a whole lot easier to sleep. And it blessed my heart this morning to see them come in, making a choice and sticking with a commitment. But making a choice calls you and I to a place of commitment. Number two, to make a choice is my responsibility. This is a big one. To make a choice is my responsibility. Verse 15, he says, choose for yourselves. Joshua knew he could not choose for them. You can't choose for somebody else. You can't choose for your spouse. You can't choose for your kids. You can't choose for your boss. I alone can choose for my life. And the truth is, no matter how much my wife loves me or no matter how much my mom loves me, no matter how much my son loves me, nobody else in my life can make the decisions for me. I alone have the responsibility to make the choice. We live in a day. When everybody wants to blame somebody else for their problems. Well, it's that wife, God, you gave me. It's all her fault. Well, Lord, if you'd give me a better husband, then I wouldn't be in this situation. God, if you'd give us kids that weren't making us lose our minds, everything would be all right. God, if you'd give me a better boss at work, things would be a whole lot better. If you'd have given me better neighbors, if you'd have given me better this, a better that, God, it's all your fault because you gave me all these other things. How I many you know we're quick to blame somebody else for our circumstances? I read not long ago in the Reader's Digest and it said this the average American qualifies for re recognized victim status in at least three different organizations. So the truth is today, if you want to blame somebody else for your problems, there's plenty of organizations out there that you can hook up with and they'll get a support group so you can blame everybody else for your problems. When considering life, here's the reality. When you're considering your life and I'm considering my life, we need to get out a mirror and look in the mirror at who's really responsible. Now, you know, at our house, when my wife gets ready, She's getting all uh, dressed and she's getting all together and she gets out a makeup mirror and she'll look. She'll stand in front of a mirror with another mirror. Any of you ladies ever do that? And she's looking to make sure the clip's right in the back and she's looking to make sure the hair's laying right in the back. She's making sure all, you know, she's, she looks in the mirror to see if everything is okay with her. Now, we have plenty of those mirrors in our house. My wife has never come around the house with the mirror pointed out and said, hey, look at yourself. <laughs> She's never come around the mirror and said, you know what? You, you need to do something about what I'm seeing here. <laughs> all the mirrors that she uses, they're all reflecting back on her. Why? It's her responsibility. I can't do anything about it. So now, sometimes she'll come and she'll say, She'll come to me and she'll say, is this clip just right? And I'm like, whew, I don't even know if I want to touch that one. <laughs> There's been times she'll want to trim her hair. And she's like, can you cut this? Oh, nah. I'd rather give you the money than be responsible for that. <laughs> when we make a choice, a choice says this. It's my responsibility. If you want to know who's responsible for your life, you need to get out the mirror and say, I'm responsible. You say, yeah, but you don't know what they did to me. Yeah, you don't know what they said to me. Listen, I don't know what they've said, but obviously you're making some choices about what they've said. Only you 
can make the choice. You are the person who will stand before God one day and give an account. No one else will be there. Your spouse won't be there. Your parents won't be there. The boss won't be there. The friends won't be there. If you say, you know what? I'm not serving God because I saw a church member do this and they look like a hypocrite, so I won't serve God. Listen, friend, when you stand before God, that church member won't be there with you. It'll just be you and God. The power of choosing says this. It's my responsibility. Number three. This is another big one. Making a choice overcomes procrastination. Any of y'all ever procrastinate? Four of you. <laughs> I'm preaching this part for you four that raise your hand. <laughs> Making a decision overcomes procrastination. You notice in verse 15 he says this. Choose for yourselves when? This day. Today is the day to decide. Now is the time to make your choice for 2017, 2016, and 15, and all the years gone by. They're already past us. Today is the day to decide how my life's going to be. You know, your life is built on foundations. Listen, you need to set a good foundation today. You need to start out 2017 and saying this is going to be the best year of my life in serving Jesus Christ. I'm going to be more disciplined. I'm going to be more dedicated to Jesus than I've ever been before. 2017 is not going to be a weak year for me. 2017 is going to be my greatest year in living a life for Jesus. Some of you have been thinking this morning about issues that need to be dealt with in your life. Some resolutions, some things you might need to change. The power of choosing is calling you and I to stop putting it off. Listen to this small poem. Procrastination is my sin. It only brings me sorrow. I know that I should stop it. In fact, I will tomorrow. <laughs> God says in his word, today is the day. Now is the acceptable time. I wonder how much longer you're going to put off making the decision that God's calling you to make. How much longer are you going to continue to live like you're living today? Doing what you're doing. Today is the day to make a decision. Procrastination, friend, will rob you of your life and the many blessings that God has in store for us. Let me ask you this. If not today then what day? It has become a joke with Paul and I that we always start a new diet on Mondays. So therefore, it's Saturday and we'll go get Pizza King because it's not Monday. We have, I can't, we, when one of us says it, we'll go, no, I'm serious now. I'm not joking with you. <laughs> Procrastination. Power of choosing. It says you've got to get rid of procrastination. It will rob you of your life and everything good. If not today, when will it be? Joshua said these words, choose today. Choose today. Number four, making a choice determines your priorities. Making a choice determines your priorities. Verse number 15 says, choose for yourselves today. Notice what it says, whom you will serve. Choose today who you're going to serve. You need to determine in your life what you're going to serve. We know we're all called to serve the Lord first and then our spouse, then our children, and then, you know, the things around us, our jobs and other people in our lives. But I want to ask you today, when you really look at the priorities of your life, who is it that you're really serving? Are you serving yourself? Are you serving your dreams and your ambitions? Are you even serving other people? What is it that you're serving? He says, choose for yourselves today who you're going to serve. You see, when, when we get out of our selfishness and we get into serving one another, it determines our priorities. Jesus said, the greatest one among you is the one who serves. You see, the greatest person at Lighthouse Assembly is not the person that always stands at the pulpit 
or leads worship or plays an instrument or sings a song or teaches a class or greets at the door or uh, receives the offering or runs uh, the sound or the audio part of the, of the service. They're not the greatest ones. The greatest person at Lighthouse Assembly is the one who serves and says, you know what, I may not have got patted on my back. I may not have anybody said anything to me today, but I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for Jesus Christ. And I don't need those things. Frankly, those things are irrelevant compared to the call that God has placed on my life. The greatest one is the one who serves. Have you ever found someone that serve only as long as they get patted on the back? How many know that's not serving? You're trying to get a wage, and the wage is somebody patting you on the back. If you're only serving in the ministry as long as somebody's patting you on the back, then you're really not serving the ministry. You're serving yourself. Told you it was going to be quiet this morning, didn't I? We're getting a good foundation in this morning. <laughs> Listen, friend, it's about serving. It's about setting the priorities of our life in order. If you think that somebody else in this life is the path to make you feel fulfilled, if you think that money, another career, is going to make you complete, then you're going to be sorely disappointed, my friend. You need to choose for yourself today who you will serve. Make a choice what you're going to do. God is calling you and I right now, today, 2017, the beginning of the year, to make a choice. If you're going to serve the Lord, then, friend, do it faithfully. If you're going to be involved in the ministry of the kingdom, then do so and be active in the work of the kingdom. If you're going to fulfill the destiny that God has made for you, you're going to have to make a choice. You see, the choice determines my priorities. Have you found in life like I have that I make time to do what I want? I could say, how many of y'all in this room honestly would say, I live a busy life? Would you lift your hand? I live a busy life. We're all busy, aren't we? But how many know we'll find time, we'll squeak out some time to do what we want to do? We'll make the time to do our hobbies or our things that we really enjoy doing or whatever it is. We'll make the time. Listen, I want to encourage you to make a choice, and the choice will set the priorities of your life in order. Number five, making a choice eliminates clutter from your life. Look at verse 15. He says, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're living. Look down now with me, if you will, that same chapter, Joshua 24, verse 31. It says, Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the elders who outlived him and who had experienced everything the Lord had done for Israel. Listen, these were not an idolatrous people. These were people who loved the Lord. They were good people, but the truth is they had some things laying around in their life that they had not put out to pasture, if you will, once and for all. Choosing eliminates clutter from your life. It gets you away from the, well, maybe and maybe not syndrome. It gets you on the road to moving ahead. It leads you into a season of change. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off. that. A good word for that is jettison. Let us throw off everything that hinders. You have some things in your life that's hindering you? You have some bad habits that are hindering you? So just throw off everything that's hindering you. And notice this, the sin that so easily entangles. Now listen, there's a sin that easily entangles every one of us. Now for somebody it may be one thing, maybe it's a different one for somebody else. But every one of us has a sin that so easily entangles our feet. He says you need to throw off. You need to jettison. You need to get rid of everything that hinders you and the sin that so easily entangles you and run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. All the extra things. All the difficult things. How many of y'all know we're good at carrying around baggage? Well, I had this a long time ago, and I'm still keeping it with me. I have some items that, uh, that were given to me my, by my parents. I have, when I was a young boy, my dad bought me a train set. I still have all of my train set. 
uh, that my dad bought me when I was a kid. And I have several items like that. Uh, the problem is, the older I get, how many of y'all know the more you get in life? And you get to the place where you're like, okay, now where do we put this? So what do we do? We have a garage. What do we do then? Then we have to build a shed because we got to get some things out of the garage. And then when that don't work, then we rent a storage unit. We fill up the storage unit with the things that we have that won't go in the garage or the shed or in the house. And Yeah, I told you a story the other week about we usually come around to a time where we're cleaning out and, and we have one room that has lots of books. And I'll look at my wife and I'll say, are, are we getting rid of some books? And she'll go, I don't know. And she'll say, well, I'll go look. And, and I'm thinking, you know, she's going to come out with a box full. She'll come out with two books. <laughs> She'll say, I can let these two books go. That's about it. We have things in our lives that we seem to cling to and hold on to. Listen, in your spiritual walk, when you begin to make some choices that 2017 is going to be different, it's going to unclutter your life because when you commit to that priority, these things become fringe things that aren't nearly as important in your life. All the extra things, all the difficult things. Listen, the forgiveness you've been needing to extend to somebody else. The release of an offense that happened to you in the past. The lack of mercy that you've been needing, to, that you haven't given, that you need to give. Letting go of the past. Letting go of past hurts and wounds. Paul and I was talking the other day about a situation that happened in our lives several years ago. And honestly, we got in this conversation, and you would have thought it was yesterday. And we looked at each other and said, do you realize how many years that's been? Folks, we can carry things around with us forever. That's kind of mine, and i got to kind of keep all this stuff, and I'll keep it with me. And, and so what we're doing is we're trying to run this race, and we got all this stuff we're bringing along. All that stuff's going to do, friend, is slow you down. That stuff's going to detour you and keep you from being able to reach your potential and move on to the things that God has for you. Making a choice eliminates that clutter in our lives. Number six. Number six. Making a choice unifies my family. Notice what he says. But as for me and my house, as for me and and my house. Making a choice unifies your family. Some of you in this room uh, are what we might call empty nesters. Your kids have moved on. Your kids have moved out. You still on the front porch waving with a smile on your face as they were heading out. And you thought, I've been delivered. Some of you are on the other end of the spectrum. You stood on the porch too, waving with tears flowing down your face. I shared earlier that the day that our son moved out, we helped him move. And uh, we got him all moved in and we got his stuff in. And he was kind of like, okay, I'm home. Where are you supposed to be? You know? And so we loaded up and we came home and went home and sat on the porch in the swing together and sat on the porch and cried because our nest was now empty. Your life changes, and the truth is when they leave your house, there's nothing. How many of y'all have found that we struggle with making them do it when they live in there, but when they're away, you really can't make the decisions for them. You can't make the choices for them. It's up to them. But I want to tell you something. Though you can't make the choice for your kids, you still will always be dad and mom, and you still have the power of influence. Now, how many of you ever found that your children don't listen to you? I got more hands on that one than any other thing this morning. <laughs> your kids don't listen to you. They don't listen to you when you're home and when they get on their own. They're still not listening. But that doesn't mean I'm not speaking. I'm still going to speak words that they need to hear. I'm still going to encourage them in the things of the Lord. I'm still going to encourage them in things of life. I'm still going to be dead. I'm not going to stop being dead just because nobody's listening. If that were the case, I'd have stopped a long time ago. You need to keep speaking into their life. You need to keep speaking words of life into their hearts. 
Do everything you can. Extend every opportunity that you have the ability. He says, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Now, the truth is, you can't make the decision for your child to follow Jesus Christ. But you can provide an environment where it's enticing and it's good and it's right. You can pray for them. You can read the word over them. You can bless them. You can speak the right words in their life. You can say, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. I'm determining. I'm responsible. I'm going to do everything in my power to make it be so. That's for me and my house. If you're a young family, now's the time to choose. As for me and my house. Young men, I call you to take your leadership responsibilities serious. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. You cannot control the will of another, but you can set the pace, sir. You can set the example. Gentlemen, you can set the bar high. You can't make them do the things, but you can be the person God's called you to be, and you can be the person of example that they can follow. The truth is the enemy would like to ravage our families and devastate our dreams, but it's time. To make a choice and decide. I don't know what the people down the street are going to do. But at our house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't know what my buddy is going to do with his family. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't know about the people down the block or the people I work with. I don't even know about my extended family. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We didn't sign up for this just because it felt good. We signed up like you did when you got married, till death do us part. I'm in this thing for the long haul. I'm sticking with Jesus because Jesus has always stuck with me. I'm not giving up on him because he's never given up on me. I'm going to live for him. I'm going to work for him. I'm going to serve him as long as there's breath and there's strength in this body. I don't know what 2017 will mean. I don't know what the presidential election will mean. I don't know what economic things will mean. I don't know what insurance things will mean. But I know this. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I can't control those things, but I can control this. Jesus Christ will be first. And foremost in our lives. There are so many things, friends, that are clamoring for your attention. But you have to determine what you're going to do. You've got to determine who you're going to serve. Determining to choose unifies your family. Number seven and last of all. Making a choice determines my future. Making a choice determines my future. Notice verse 15. He says, we will, will, we will serve the Lord. In view of God's faithfulness, it calls you and I to step towards him. We will serve the Lord. No matter what others are doing, we'll serve him. I don't know what tomorrow may bring, but I'll serve him. I don't know what I may have to go through in 2017, but yet I will serve the Lord. Making a choice determines your future. What you choose today creates your tomorrow. What you determine today will determine your future. If you continue on the path, listen to my heart this morning. If you continue on the path that you're on today, Where is it going to lead you? Where are you going to end up? Where are you going to end up? If you stay on the same path, keep doing the same thing you're doing, what's the outcome going to be? What's the outcome going to be? It's all about choices. It's your choice and yours alone. 
me ask you, isn't it time for a new season? Isn't it time for change? Isn't it time to jettison those things that are hindering your life? Isn't it time to give the forgiveness that you need to give to that person? Isn't it time to release that person and stop carrying around that baggage? Let me ask you this question. The path you're on, what's ahead for your life in 2017 and beyond? The choices you're making, where are they going to lead you? The power of choice, my friend, lies in your hands. You are not at the will of life. No, I can't control everything everybody does to me, but I can determine and I can choose what I do with it. You and I alone direct our future. I've seen a lot of things the last couple of days on Facebook. I've seen a lot of people that have said, man, I'm so thankful 2016 is gone. 2016 was the worst year of my life. I'm so glad for a new year. I'm so glad for change. I hope 2017 is not like 2016 was. Listen, friend, it's day one. It's day one. It's time to make a choice. You can keep carrying that thing or you can let that thing go. You can keep doing like you're doing or you can start walking in a new leash on life. It's time for a choice. It's time for a choice. You alone have the responsibility. You alone can make the decisions. Would you bow your heads this morning? Father, I look to you this morning. And Father, as we stand on this beginning, a brand new day, a brand new year, a brand new season of our lives. As we stand right here when everything is fresh and new. God, I pray that you would help us today to begin making right choices and experience in our lives the power of choosing to choose for some change, to choose to let go of some things that are worrying us and causing us anxieties and fear to choose to step out where we've been afraid to step out before, to choose to obey the voice of the Lord where we've been unsure before. Father, even something as simple as choosing to read the Word this year, when we look at maybe how we failed in the past, choosing that 2017, I'm going to give my heart and life to Jesus Christ. 2017, choosing is going to be a year that I'm going to be more disciplined and determined to live for Jesus than I've ever been before. Choosing to trust and not doubt. Choosing to stand firm and not being unstable choosing Father I pray today that you would help us as we began this brand new year God we give you what we have we give you all that we are we ask you Father to do more than we can begin to ask or even imagine this year I pray in Jesus name Amen and Amen would you stand with me this morning in closing here's how I'd like to close our time together today if your prayer is that 2017 you want to be this, this to be the greatest year in your walk with Jesus Christ what I'm going to ask you to do today is take a step of faith 
If that's your prayer and you say, I want this year to be the greatest year of my walk with Jesus, or maybe this year for you, it's starting a walk with Jesus. Either one of those conditions or situations, if that's you, I'm going to ask you, you'll step out, and I'm going to ask you to come and fill across the front of our church, and you can even fill into the aisles. You say, I want this to be the greatest year of my walk with Jesus Christ. I want this to be the greatest year of serving Him. I want to walk closer to Jesus this year than any year of my life. I want to be His this year and His alone. I want to hear his voice more than I've ever heard his voice before. I want to experience fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Just just keep moving in, if you will. Just keep moving out towards the front so as many can get around as can. This can be the greatest year of your life in Jesus Christ. Some of you, 2016, presented some things in your life that you did not anticipate. And friends, in this life, I can tell you, because of the way life is, 2017 is going to be some things that you and I have not planned on to. But the best place your life can be is right in the hands of the Father. Here's what I want to do this morning. There have been some things that the Lord has been talking to Jerry about that I need to make some choices on in 2017 in my walk with Jesus. You see, there's only so far we can go without yielding some things to him. It's like, okay, you come this far. Are you going to keep walking this path? Are you going to keep doing this? Or is it time to move on? And so there's some things he's been speaking to my heart about. It. Here's how I want us to close. If you'll take your hands and pour them in a cup. And here's what I'd like to ask you to do. Those things that that you know or maybe the Lord has been sharing with you about that need to change. I'm going to ask you by faith just to kind of visualize putting those things right in your hand. Those things, maybe there's some old habits you need to give up or some new habits you need to create. Maybe for some of you it's letting go of some past hurts and offenses. Some things that have kept you way down. Just kind of put them in there. What I want you to do, I'm going to pray a prayer this morning for us as a congregation, but I'm going to ask you right where you're at to pray a prayer. And I want you to give that thing to Him. Lord, I give it to you. Lord, I give it to you. Lord, I give you those things in the past. I give you my failures. I give you my things I've not been very good at. I give you the things that I'm ashamed of. And I even give you the things that I regret whatever they may be, as we pray, would you just yield that to him? Heavenly Father, right now in Jesus' name, God, you see our hands that are cupped together, the things we've placed there by faith. Father, for each person, they're different. For each person, they're specific. But Father, you know them all. Today, Father, we give it to you. Father, I give you those errors that you've been talking to me about. I thank you Thank you that you would challenge me to make change. Thank you that you've not left me alone. Thank you that you love me enough to talk to me about those things. Father, I give that to you today. I give it to you and I surrender it to you wholly and completely. Lord, it's not in my strength alone. It's in you. I make the choice, but I'm thankful to know that you come along beside me and you help me every step of the way. So, Father, would you hear the prayers of your people today? Hear the desire of their heart. And I pray in the name of Jesus for release in their life. I pray for release from those things. I pray for release over things that have held them bondage. I pray for release over those things that have held them captive. I pray for release over things that have been chained to their life. I pray for release over fear to start something new. I pray for release. Release. In the name of Jesus over their life. And I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you'll take them as yours. And God, I pray this will be a brand new season in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Now I want you to do something. Just take those hands and separate them. Refuse to hold that thing any longer. Refuse to keep it in the palm of your hand. Don't bring it back. Leave it gone. You've released it to him. Now I want to pray a prayer over each one of you. My Father, as we stand in this place today, in a brand new season that you have given us, God, my heart is filled with greater anticipation than I think it's ever been filled with. Father, I pray for every person in this room. I pray 2017 will be a year, God, they'll know you in a greater way. I pray 2017 will be the year of the word of God in their heart and in their life. I pray 2017 will be a year they'll walk in communion closer with you than they have ever known before. I pray in the name of Jesus, they will experience your hand leading and guiding them. This year will be the year they'll experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit in a way they've never known it. I pray this will be a year, God, they'll know you deeper. They'll walk closer. They'll hear your voice more. And they'll love you more than they've ever loved you before in their life. Lord, I believe for these things. And I thank you for a new season. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives and in our homes. And God, I thank you for what you're doing in our church. And God, in all these things, I'm expecting even greater things. I believe 2017 is going to be our greatest year in you. And I'm trusting you because you are faithful. And so, Lord, today I pray your best blessings on these men and women. I pray you'll keep them right in the palm of your hand. I pray you'll take good care of them. These are your sons and daughters. I pray you'll love them with an undying love, Father. I pray you'll be merciful and gracious when they need it. And I pray, Father, you'll keep their life right in the very palm of your hand. Take good care of them, Father. Father, I ask these things. In the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, my Savior and my Lord, I ask it all in Christ's name. And all the church said, Amen. so be it. So be it in the name of the Lord. Can I encourage you now before you leave? Today's day one. There's no past yet in 2017. We're still in the day. I want to encourage you. If you don't have a Bible reading plan, Stop by, pick one up. The Word of God will change your life. I just saw Rodney standing right in front of me. I looked all around and I didn't see you till just now. Rodney needs a touch in his body. Rodney had open heart surgery, quadruple bypass several weeks ago, and he's had some complications, and he's going back this week on Thursday, right? Would you, uh, for those of you around, would you mind just a light hand on him and it's a point of grief. Let's pray for Rodney, right? He needs a lot, needs a touch of the Lord. Father, I just pray for my friend right now. I ask you, Lord, just to touch Rodney in a supernatural way. God, I know he doesn't feel good today. But Lord, I'm amazed. He's made a decision. He wants to be in your house. I pray, God, you'll do something incredible for him. I pray you'll touch him and strengthen him in his body. I pray, Heavenly Father, your hand will be upon him. And Lord, I know that you have been and you're going to continue to work all things together for the good in his life. God, you have his life in the palm of your hand. God, his hope is not in the doctors. Our hope is in you. We trust you today. And I pray, God, you'll take really good care of him. I pray for a complete restoration. I pray, God, for greater strength in his body this year. I pray this will be, Lord, he received you at the end of last year. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, this has been a year he's been serving you. I pray 2017 will be an even greater year of living for you, growing in you, and knowing you in a greater way. Continue to prove yourself faithful to him, I pray. And Lord, I trust you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Amen.
Rodney started on a journey with Jesus at the beginning of 2016, and it's been an incredible year. God's doing incredible things in life, and he's going to keep it up. We love all of you. Look forward to all that God has for us together this year. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, establish your goings, and may the joy of the Lord always be your strength. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus. God bless.